Today's guest on the Company of Dads podcast is David Newson. He does something in his work and family life that when I heard about it, I was floored. I mean, in a good way. Like, he'd been reading my mind and I needed to talk to him immediately. And what he is doing is so groundbreaking that it can change company culture for fathers. But it's also something that any senior leader can model. More on that in a second. First, some introduction on David. Uh, his background is in marketing and he's risen high in his profession. He's a chief marketing officer and also a partner at Serity Partners, a fast growing wealth management firm. He's married. His husband, David, has a senior role at the Sierra Club and they have a four year old son, Xander. David, welcome to the Company of Dads podcast. Happy to be here, Paul. Thanks for having me. All right, I don't want to keep the listeners waiting any longer. One of the things I obsess about is my calendar. Work, family, fun, it's all in there. And a month or so ago, I was at a cocktail party in New York with one of your partners, and uh, we were talking, talking about the company of dads, and she said, you've got to meet you know, David. You won't believe what he does with his <laughs> calendar. And once she told me, I said, we have to speak because we are brothers from another mother. This is what I do. And so you have become known within your firm for publicly blocking out time to do things with your son. And this is something I wish so many other senior executives would do because they'd be a model for something that is essential. So talk to me about this. Your son is four, but how did this, how did the blocking out of that time for him or, or for your husband, just family time in general, how did that blocking out start? It started, um, you know, interestingly, like as my schedule and demands at work continued to rise, I found myself increasingly at various intersections where I just felt like, gosh, you know, how do I do, how do I do more with like less? I, I need to be doing more things like with in, you know, a shorter period of time. Um, and um, I, I hired some folks to help me do with that, right? So call them an executive coach, but this group was a lot more than that. Um, and um, one of the first things we started evaluating was, gosh, you know, let's let's evaluate like your level of what makes you feel alive, right? And um, <laughs> the one thing for me well, that- what Was the answer, the answer wasn't PowerPoints? Is that what you're saying? It, it was it definitely not PowerPoints, right? Like never what is, made me feel is. alive was like looking inside looking at my husband or my son's eyes and seeing the magic and the sparkle of life right and that is not um like work allows me to do these wonderful things in the world and i'm super grateful for that um and so we focused on what makes you feel alive um and that's my family right activities with my son being present with my son and not oh gosh what's looming over right like just really focused on like being with him in the activity and, and and being focused on it. And so one of the things that um, one of the tools I learned was like, okay, you know, in, there's lots of debate in the, the business community. Like, okay, do you block your calendar or you do not block your calendar? Some people believe in it. Other people don't believe in it. Right. So uh, for me, um, I made the decision, like I need to block my calendar um, of what I would refer to as like inviolable space. Yeah. And I had to really think through like, what are those times? What will you be doing? And are you willing? The challenge was put to me. Are you willing to create a solid boundary around it? Mm -hmm. um, because those things that you care about, you put boundaries around um, and you stick to them. And so that's what I did. Let me ask you, how do you, what do you, I mean, give me an example of what it would say. If I, if I were looking at your calendar now, what would it say in relation to, you know, the other meetings that you have? you know, during the day? What does it say? Um, so I'm looking at it right now. So between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. every single day, it says Xander getting ready for school. Um, and then there's a dash. And in all caps, it says dad time. Okay. <laughs> and it's, it's Monday clear. through Friday of every week. Yeah. Huh. Now, here's the interesting part that I didn't mention in the intro, sort of on purpose. But, you know, I'm talking to you from the East Coast. You live on 
the West Coast in Portland, Oregon. So like if somebody on the East Coast and your firm is national, but you know, sure. A lot of financial services, there's a pull of gravity to to sort of New York time. Um, you know, if somebody in in New York's like, oh, you know what, uh six to eight, I'm gonna block that out uh for my son, that wouldn't be such a big deal. But for you, um, that was really a conversation you had to have at your partners because, you know, New York time, you know, let's all do the quick math for people, you know, that's nine to 11. So, you know, let's be honest, <laughs> nine to nine 30, people are kind of, you know, finishing their coffee, sure. talking nonsense. But by the time you hit 10, you know, you're, you're starting to, to, to ramp up. You're starting to have meetings. So talk to me about, you know, how, you know, your partner, you, but you're, you're one among equals. So how did you have that conversation with, with your colleagues? Well, I think what's interesting, I think it comes down to planning, right? And also um, having conversations. Like, um, I'm fortunate enough to be on the executive committee of the firm. And, you know, we are a, a group and a team that values each other, right? And every dimension of who we are as human beings. Like, it, you know, we share this um, common bond called work, um, but we also care deeply about each other as human beings. And how that shows up is when we're, tra when we're actually planning for the year, we're talking through calendars. And so we made, you know, there's a fair amount of travel required too. And, and so we like, what days are meeting days and what times are gonna work for folks? And, you know, there's, you know, some sometimes spirited debate over those times. Yeah. Um, but we all kind of landed on, okay, like on Fridays between this time and this time, and we just made sure like, well, I made sure, like I was advocating for like, it's after 8 a.m. Yeah. And what happens, you know, somebody, you know, I, I, it's it's set now. People surely know this around your firm, but in the early days, I'm sure people looked at that and said, oh, dad time. I can call him then. You know, he's not on a, not on a client call. So what would you do when, when somebody called you up uh, during that time that was clearly blocked out? So I'd let them, so one, I would, if they're calling my phone, which is kind of rare these days, right? Like people aren't are kind of slow to pick up the phone. Um, okay. uh, you might get a text message, you might get a Teams message or some other instant message or type of a, you know, right? Um, so one, I have a choice to not answer my phone, but if it's somebody, you know, important, somebody, well, one of my partners, for example, or, um, you know, I, I would be inclined to pick up the phone, right? And also, you know, politely, but firmly, you know, let them know, like, you know, this is time that I blocked out for my son and I'm happy to have this conversation, but at a time where I'm actually free, yeah. right? At, at a time where I can actually, you, where that individual actually has access to all of me, yeah. right? Like not encumbered by like, I'm in dad mode, right? Like I am focused on my son right now. Um, and you want me to be focused on you when I speak to you. Right. And so um, once you have that conversation a couple of times, I, I don't, it really stops happening pretty quickly. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, did you get any, you know, I, I want to go in a different way, but did you get any pushback? Did anybody, you know, grumble uh, uh, about this? Did you have to, you know, kind of explain the obvious that it's, you know, se seven o'clock and, and, and small children need to be fed before they're, you know, need to have their parent before they're sent off to school? Or, I mean, um, Generally speaking, it's been pretty good, I will say. I mean, I, I um, but I have had, I have had a few experiences where, um, I mean, as you might imagine, Mike, is anyone in the workforce today, sometimes, you know, calendars can get pretty squirrely pretty fast, very, you know, filled up really quickly and very difficult, challenging, in fact, mm -hmm. to get on calendar. Um, mm -hmm. Right, if something's urgent, or if there's like a a, a communication, or a um, let's say it's a, a firm wide Zoom that they're requesting my participation to present or speak on, right? Um, and they book it during one of those times. This has happened. Uh, they booked it during one of those times, and I um, politely, you know, declined the meeting request, mm -hmm. you know, and put in, you know, and I added my comments like, you know. You know, this is during dead time and, you know, happy, 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 happy to like rearrange things on the yeah. calendar to accommodate this. Um, unfortunately, this is one of those time blocks that's, you know, not going to work. And the response I got, the pushback was, David, we really need you there. Mm -hmm. And I said, my response to that was, and I really want to be there at a time I'm available. All right. That's fair. Cause you know, I, I thought, and my son really needs me too in the morning, but I mean that you, you, that's where you're in marketing and I'm not, that's a better, <laughs> that's a better response just, than I would have given. 
you know, and, and it's interesting. You have a you have those conversations a few times, and and believe it or not, um, I mean, it's it's human, right? Like when we're at work, we want to get a lot of stuff done, right? You know, I you know, and and I'm grateful to be in a in an environment with a lot of high performing people who want to get a lot of things done. I support that completely. But yeah. what allows me to do that so well is me also being able to focus on time with you know my son and my family. I'm an optimist, and I do believe that that people, if if given you know polite pushback or polite direction, will ultimately do the right thing. Because I mean, you're on the West Coast; they know you're on the West Coast. You're a partner. You're the chief marketing officer. None of that is you know uh, hidden. But like, if you had a call set up and you were in New York, and every day at six a.m. Uh, New York time, somebody would call you, that would get old pretty quickly. Uh, oh yeah. And and but I think about this in a different way. Um, if you were having a meeting, you, 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 you work at a wealth management firm, you know, managing billions and millions and millions of dollars. If somebody, another partner had uh, an all partners meeting, and then they got a call from your fourth largest client uh, who was very upset or very happy or very something that involved tens of millions of dollars. I mean, would anybody ever push back and say, "Hey, why aren't you on that call? You're, you know, you were you were meeting with our client and you're not on that call." Do you see an analogy to that of sort of putting those boundaries around things that are uh, essential? Sure. Um, this is an interesting question, and um, and one that, in my position, I'm I'm generally not inserted into those like client facing discussions. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm insulated from that just by a degree. Um, but what is also, so I can pontificate on it though, right? So from a marketing standpoint, right? Um, from a marketing standpoint for our client facing, for my client facing partners out there, I would advocate like, you know, if there's something that you feel strong about, like family, right? If that's right. one of the things that like, I'm not saying that people don't, but like everyone has varying degrees of their, um, involvement or whatever the, whatever their balance looks like is different for everyone so i recognize that but like for those that feel strongly like i do um about having this time with members of their family because it nourishes and feeds and allows them to be who they are and really um do their best work at work yeah. um, by having this time with their family then um, I would tell them like, you need to have those conversations with your clients because yeah. here's the thing, like if you like in wealth management, like it, it here's what's the, the beauty of wealth management to me is, um, these are really deep relationships that are, um, that deepen and grow over time, um, from a client and an advisory relationship, because you're sitting at kind of the intersection of lots of financial complexity and with financial complexity comes a lot of complexity of what it means to be a human, right? So there's like complex financial scenarios when it comes to, you know, children going to college or, you know, um, various, you know, what's happening in Silicon Valley, folks wondering, am I going to have a job tomorrow? Like there's a lot of planning issues, you know, right. that, that are confronted by those folks every day. Um, and their financial advisor is, you know, the, could be the very first person that they call like, oh my gosh, this is happening. What do I do? Right. Um, but if they also know that through that relationship, they are going to understand what you value. Mm -hmm. I would find it very hard to believe that a client would want to end a relationship based on you sharing and sticking to a value that you hold dear. I mean, yeah. I, I can't imagine. And, and I would also posit that, you know, if they do, maybe that's not a great client. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, are, there are other wealth management firms out there. For yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's my opinion though. So um, I do feel that we're at a tipping point because there was a time where, you know, uh, and look, let me just back up and say, uh, you know, working moms have been dealing with this forever <laughs> of like, yeah. and, and they've been taking the brunt of this, but if there's one thing that COVID and work from home changed, it was this sort of, you know, dads being able to, to think like, hey, uh, this balance has been nice. I'm still hyper productive. Uh, I'm still doing well. But 
there a podcast I did recently was with a, a consultant, longtime consultant for Deloitte, who uh, wrote a, a paper on essentially the the focus of, of sort of it's called the everyday man report it had a ridiculous consultant uh title but it was what they found was really interesting in that it talked about how um men now want to bring their whole self to work uh and if you know just as some guy who is a rabid fan of fill it in the new york yankees the san francisco giants whatever he wants to talk about that at work you know men who are fathers also want to talk about that but one of the things that this report found that i found so interesting is that for men who are not, you know, at your level, partner level, CMO level, who are not leaders in the company, they only feel that they can take that time or be that whole person if senior executives like yourself are modeling that behavior. So you explicitly putting in your calendar six to eight, you know, Xander dad time. That That's why it is so important. It's important for you, important for your family, but it's so incredibly important uh, for, for the, you know, your company and, and the workforce more broadly. Have you noticed since doing that, um, any more people, uh, at the firm feeling more comfortable to block out, you know, time to be with their own family and not having to lie about it, not having to say, you know, a mm. uh, soccer game when really it's not a soccer game. It's just, you want to spend some time with your daughter and, and, and get a nice. Sure. I, I haven't directly observed that, but I have noticed the, increase in uptick in the um, ability to talk about it, mm-hmm. like the ability to to share um, what's going on outside of work and um, as it relates to family and kind of normalizing the chatter, if right, even amongst my own team, right? Um, the pandemic brought it into incredible focus when You know, at any given moment of the day, you know, Xander could open the door, walk in and crash your meeting. Right. And, you know, it wasn't that long ago. And the podcast you're mentioning with the the uh, former Deloitte uh, consultant I I listened to last night, as a matter of fact. And um, and it, it, it it's fascinating because pre pandemic, that behavior would have been called out as well someone might have called you after right and actually called you out and said hey that's not really professional to kind of have your kid walking in and like crashing the meeting like not okay not cool and then covid comes along completely destroys these frankly false narratives yeah um about what it means to be a parent and work and want to be like i want to be my full self and what it means to be a human what it means to be a human this isn't just like you know yeah another part i have a child or you know yeah exactly and it's so funny like i think over time we we started compartment hyper compartmentalizing work like it's this thing that exists and what wound up happening is it started consuming more and more and more of who you were. Yeah. Um, and I think the beauty, the silver lining perhaps of COVID was it just shattered those um, kind of false narratives, if you will, um, and kind of opened the door to Xander's my pride and joy. Right. And when people see me, interact with my son even on a zoom because like i don't shoo him out right he can come in i'm going to give him a hug he can say hello <laughs> now it will be brief yeah and then he will exit but i'm not going to pretend that he doesn't exist what does that tell a child well, e- exactly <laughs> and you're not going to like you know move over here so nobody oh, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. no no like, no no yeah what is this over that. here like i don't yeah, know yeah no no, but no, let me ask you, like there's, a, you know, I apologize. The listeners have done math and we're about to do math a second time in this podcast, but Xander being four, uh, he's kind of balanced there on, you know, work from home on code. So he, he was born, what, 2018. So can, what was the difference for you? Uh, and, I, I, you know, I've got three kids. The, 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 those early years are a real blur. But what was the difference for you <laughs> when you think about how open you were able to be as a father uh, pre-COVID versus how open you are now, uh, I guess, post-COVID. Well, post, you know, so, yeah. so it, it's interesting. Like the initial reaction, it's kind of a visceral thing. So I'm just going to kind of like let it out. But 
my initial reaction is like, gosh, you know, you can come out of the closet. Like you come out of the closet at work at one point, it was like, hey, you've got to come out in order to like, right, for the yeah. movement itself, in order to get accept, you know, for acceptance and the world to change, you need to be out and you need to be an out professional. Yeah. If you can do that, like what? Telling people I'm a dad is a problem? <laughs> it's just not. It's just, to me, it was just not a thing. Yeah. Um, but I also see like in in the, you know, in the straight world, that's not how it's been set up. Right. Like talking about being a dad can be, you know, fraught with all kinds of things. Um, and so in some ways I feel uh, lucky because it's like, well, gosh, you know, like, okay, it came out. There was this very big kind of earth shattering thing in my past. So like the dad thing, like kind of coming out as a dad at work was not a, really a thing. It's just it's a, like, yeah. no, this is who I, this is who I am. And Yeah. Okay. But I mean, when was the first time you put it in your calendar? Do you remember when was the first time you started blocking? Were you blocking out that time in a pre-work from home, March 2020? Or is this something that sort of evolved? Uh, no, it, you- it evolved. It evolved. Um, it is interesting. So pre-COVID, um, my husband and I left the San Francisco Bay Area in 2017 mm-hmm. in anticipation of our son's birth and um, went remote in 2017. So he was at the Sierra Club. Um, I was at um, a legacy firm that wound up merging with my current firm. Um, and I was one of 10 partners at that firm. And I, I, you know, at the time, you know, just said like, hey, we're moving to Portland. I mean, it was a little bit more delicate than yeah, this, yeah, but yeah. basically we're moving to Portland, your move, right? The Sierra Club was very open-minded to that. And my partner, I mean, luckily, I think as long as you live near a tree, you're okay with the Sierra Club, <laughs> right? Like, that's the key. Like, how many trees around you? All right, that's fine. And he can justify right, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, and I, I, I feel grateful and lucky I had um, partners that were like awesome and we worked it out, you know? Um, so, we, uh, my point there being in 2017, we luckily had the experience of going remote in an environment that was not really used to it yet. And then COVID hit and we did not have the, um, uh, we did not have the issue of, oh my gosh, we're working from home every day, right? right. Kind of a thing, right? right? The only added complexity was like, oh my gosh, we're working from home all day, every day. And we have a, a little one running around, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, or gosh, was he still crawling around? I can't even remember. I mean, like he was small, you know. Small, yeah. Um, probably should have had a nanny, but we didn't. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to put you on the spot. I don't want you to have to speak for for your husband. But I mean, or say anything bad about Sierra. But but is he able to do the same thing? Is he in a position where, for his work, he can block out the same you know square of time? You know, I don't. So know, so yeah. yeah I, I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but yeah. for the conversations that we have, I have got to say what the Sierra club is doing on the people front and a cultural front is, um, at the forefront of what I've seen anywhere. Right. I mean, it is celebrated. It is, it's just, it's, it's quite, um, an example, if you will. That's out there today. That's, that's pretty good to hear. You, you don't want to hear that the Sierra Club is like squeezing. Well, no, of course. course. You don't want to hear <laughs> you know, that. You're like, really? No, no, I don't tell no, you no, that. There, it's like, like, you know. There's intentionality behind it. There's um, a lot of care and like it's it's a, and, and, you know, I'm drawing this big contrast and like, oh, does that mean the Sarity Partners is not this way? No, they're just, they're, they're different, right? Um, and I've got to give kudos to the Sierra Club. They've been kind of at the forefront of this, so it's fantastic. Yeah. I had to ask you this, you know, and I'm sure, you know, we're all starting to go back to conferences or, you know, meeting again, <laughs> you know, super spreader events. You know, I was at one yesterday. I'm <laughs> sure I'll have COVID by the weekend. Um, but, you know, when you think about, uh, you know, colleagues, you know, other people who are, you know, senior marketing executives like you and, and other firms that are out there and they're going to, they're going to hear, you know, listen to this podcast and hear what you're doing. You know, what's the advice that you would give you know, to other firms 
to to embrace this, to just be open about, you know, people need to have the ability to block out time to be parents. And, and if you hire good people, you can trust them. You can trust them to get their job done. You're, you're not really uh, saying you're, you're, you're with your son and you're, you know, I don't know, doing yoga, which would be fine too. But, you know, you, you really have a reason. Uh, to, what's the advice that you would give, you know, other companies who are struggling with this or, or the culture maybe isn't just right yet that allows people to do it you know what what encouragement or what advice would you give them oh gosh um let's call it encouragement I, advice is kind of a dicey term um or, or maybe one that i just try to shy away from like i don't necessarily see myself as this like fountain of you know anyway um <laughs> um encouragement yeah oh um and, and I actually do see signs of it. Like there, there are signs. Um, there's even research, and I can't point to the specific pieces of research, but the research has been done. Um, happier people or, you know, happier people outside of work are more engaged and productive at work. Um, and it's almost like, wow, did you really need to do research on that? Because like that just kind of intuitively makes sense as a human being. Like if you were to like go out into the woods and like meditate a little while, you would I think you'd probably come to the same conclusion that like, gosh, when I'm grounded and rested and like connected to the things that matter most to me, it allows me to show up at work in a connected, dynamic, very focused way. Yeah. Um, whereas and I think, you know, for companies considering things like it, it, it's it kind of like goes back to human centered design. Like when you, when you start thinking about how humans move through the world, how do we design work that allows for people to be most productive? And I think that also included in that has to be like, gosh, we recognize like, you know, <laughs> you're helping like, and this is even, I guess some folks aren't. You know, I was just reading an article the other day, like we should be planning for the demise of you know human beings, right? Like I think it was in the Atlantic I just saw this morning, but it's like, okay, there's folks out there that think that, right? But yeah, if we are creating um, or helping to raise the future of tomorrow from a people standpoint, then doesn't it make sense as a work culture that you would want these, you know, kind of, leaders or people working in the workplace to be spending time investing right. and even if we were looking at it from a pure like equation standpoint bless you that's gonna be edited out you didn't know <laughs> of <those>. course <laughs> um no you're right but if you look at it and i see it you know my wife you know i've been the lead dad uh you know Everyone knows before the company to dads, I was a long time New York Times columnist and I was able to figure it out while, you know, working full time while, you know, writing books, you know, giving keynote talks. Um, <clears throat> and my wife, you know, she's wonderful. She's, you know, credits me for saying, you know, my husband being a lead dad allowed me to fulfill my full potential. Mm -hmm. It's great to hear. Um, but the flip side of this is, you know, one of her longest serving employees um, is, is a lead dad himself. You know, his wife is a, uh, uh, a doctor and, uh, you know, and, and their daughter, uh, has, has daycare and all this, but it, as you know, it is every parent knows, you know, daycare works until it, it doesn't work. And it, it never doesn't work on a day when you have nothing to do. It, it always stops working on a day when you have meetings and all this, and you've got to scramble. Now, pre pandemic, that was harder. Post pandemic people get it. Keep kids are getting sick all the time, but it, she's really gotten a real appreciation for it because, you know, I've been the lead dad uh, in our family, but here is this, this great guy, this great employee um, who is a, a lead dad. And it's that, but he's also in his thirties. And so there's a part of me that thinks, you know, you know, I'm in my forties. You're, are you in your forties yet? You're in your oh, 40s? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You're being oh, yeah. kind, but uh, yeah. You're in your forties. Uh, you know, I was talking to a guy earlier today who's in his seventies who loves the idea, but, but believes that we're all going to go back uh, to work five days a week in the office. And I said, you know, he, he, he dines at this place that has a really fancy cocktail. And I said, I'll, I'll bet you one of those fancy cocktails uh, that yep. there's no way that's going to happen. It's just not going to happen. He's like, yeah. oh. I was like, no, because people in their 20s and 30s are living their lives differently. And this is the human center design. And companies, I believe, are going to adapt to them. What do you think? Yeah. Um, I actually know from my own experience, if I want to do more, I have to slow down and do less. 
Right. If that makes any sense, right? No, this is da Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel Prize winner. Yes. Fast thinking slowly. Yep. Yes. And what's fascinating about it is like if you've been like for me, I'll speak, you know, I've been doing marketing as a craft for a long time. Right. I'm way beyond 10,000 hours. I'm way beyond like these other measures that, yeah. you know, are out there in the research. And so there is like that. Uh, and it wasn't thinking fast, thinking slow, like where they're doing the like, oh, is it a is that a passenger jet or is that a fighter jet? Like needing to make this like very gut instinctual decision based on like all kinds of hours, you know, behind yeah. it. And it's like, did did you make the right call? Right. There's elements of that at work, no matter what you do. Uh, and in my own personal experience, if I, in order to go faster, I need more time being silent. And that's like, even from my family, right? There's a personal component where it's like, okay, David needs his time in the woods. Like literally like Portland yeah. is a wonderful, but like, I need my run, my trail runs in the woods to make sure that like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with my own center before I can even then be a good dad and a good colleague at work. But yeah. the moment that I slow down, it allows me to come into work, look at my calendar and be incredibly focused, like in between meetings, or if I have time blocked out to do certain tasks, like incredibly focused. And I, some days will look back and be like, wow, that was like the pr productivity in that day yeah. could not be measured in hours. Yeah. And I think that's where we get it all messed up. Like, Many times at work, we're thinking of productivity in hours and not necessarily like, what is the value creation of the output? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think if you were to actually study it over long periods of time, like, okay, when people are, you know, actually focused on things that matter most to them, for me, family, my son, um, then I show up at work very excited about what I can deliver because like, I mean, it's, you can go back and look at it through like Maslow's hierarchy, right? Yeah, like the needs. Yeah. these needs are being met, like, and then, okay, it allows me to show up at work and really like kind of crush it. David Newsom, thank you for being a guest on the Company of Dads podcast. I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Today. Thank you. Likewise.